Whether you're hoping to give yourself a little extra privacy while you surf the internet, or you want to access services that perhaps aren't available typically in your area, or maybe it's a case of actually having had your IP address blocked by a service provider. It may not be a malicious thing. I've had my IP address blocked by YouTube before because I upload so many videos and download the closed captions for those. So that has led to me exceeding my usage in the YouTube API. So then my IP address gets blocked. So it doesn't have to be a malicious thing. I don't want to give that impression, but there are very legitimate reasons to need to get around those types of things. And the nerds go to is a proxy. The problem is proxies can be very expensive to use and the free ones, while readily available, are very often either not very reliable, they're up one day, they're down the next, and you lose access to your services and everything else, or even worse, they're dangerous. You don't know what those proxies are tracking, logging, and even like intercepting as you're going through. You're sending all of your internet traffic through that service provider. So there's one person who I really trust to proxy all of my data, and that's me. I'm not the same person that you would say that you trust. The person that you trust is you. So I'm going to show you how I might set up a free proxy service of my own, and you can replicate that and create your own as well. We're going to do this in the cloud. We're, we are going to be using a third-party service provider, and that's Amazon. So you say, oh, well, Amazon, what about, you know, are, are we able to trust our data to them? Well, what we're using is their cloud services. It's called Amazon Web Services. So it's all of their, it's their cloud infrastructure that they have for customers to basically rent access to their servers and their, their space and, and the, the virtual servers and everything else. That whole infrastructure is available to you, but the deployment itself is yours. I'm going to show you how this is done. We're going to jump on to AWS and in particular EC2. So of course, you, if you're not familiar with AWS, just go to aws.amazon.com, sign in with your Amazon account, and then do a quick search for EC2. And that will take you into basically their virtualization platform. Think of EC2 as just that. So the first thing I note when I'm here in EC2 is my region. And this is important because this is where my proxy server is going to reside should I set it there. Why is that important? Well, think about this. Let's say I'm using a video streaming service that restricts Canadian access to their video streaming service. So by placing my proxy server down in North California, now, all of a sudden, they are basically, by IP address, going to think that I'm connecting from California. So I'm able to work around that. Similarly, you may want to change your region based on what it is you're trying to achieve. You can even put a server in Africa or Asia. Look at that. You can put one right in Hong Kong. Uh, you can put one in Canada, eh? Uh, in Europe, you've got all over the place. And then we've got Middle East and South America right now. So. It's a pretty big list of where they have this infrastructure set up for Amazon Web Services, the EC2 service. Um, so pick the one that is where you want your proxy server to be. I'm going to set mine. I'm just going to leave it as North California, which is US West 1. And that is where my proxy server is going to reside. That's going to allow me to connect um, as if I was actually sitting in California. All right, so I'm going to click on Launch Instance and then launch instance again, because it does a drop down. And this gives me a list of um, operating systems that I can deploy on my EC2 instance. So I'm using some terms here you may not be familiar with. AWS is Amazon Web Services. That's basically Amazon's full gamut of services that they offer uh, for cloud users. Um, EC2 is their virtualization platform for virtual machines. Um, when I said instance, I'm talking about a virtual machine. 
So that is literally a virtual machine. So I'm going to deploy one of these operating systems to an instance of EC2, which is a virtual machine. So what do I want it to be? So, uh, and I was saying, hey, comment below if I use a term that you're not familiar with. I'm going to do a quick search. I've already done it before because I, I deploy a ton of servers in the cloud. I'm going to click on Debian. Uh, just type in Debian into the search here. So then I'm going to go to AWS Marketplace results. There are also ones that I've created and ones in the community. You would think, oh, well, I want to use community ones. Well, no, you don't because those ones are going to cost you money. And you say, well, but community is free. It's open source. And yes, however, it's um, not a part of the AWS Marketplace. And so you're going to have to pay for the usage to have that virtual machine, that instance, running uh, in the cloud. So instead, we're going to use one of the official ones from the AWS Marketplace. Let's see what results we get. They're sorted pretty well. Debian comes up. The first result is Debian 10 Buster, a free tier compatible or free tier eligible uh, version of Debian that we're going to be deploying. So select that. Free tier eligible so we can ignore the pricing because we are going to use a free tier. Hit continue. And this is where we select that. So, well, if we want the free tier, we've got to go with a T2 micro. So I'm going to select that. But what does it give us? It gives us one CPU, one gigabyte of memory. Um, and then we've got storage to deal with. We don't need a lot of storage because we're just setting up a basic proxy. And that's about it. So I'm going to deploy just as that. So T2 micro is the one that's free tier eligible. Don't select one of the bigger ones because you're going to be paying for it right away. I'm going to review and launch. We're going to come back to do um, settings like our security groups and things like that. I'm just going to leave everything by default for now. And we're going to launch that. So first of all, I need to create a new key pair. So this is the SSH key that I'm going to use in order to SSH into this server. So I'm going to call this one proxy server. And then download my key pair. Make sure you save that somewhere safe. I'm going to throw that onto my server and drop that there. And now launch instance means power on your virtual machine. So I'm going to push that. And there we go. So it's basically creating, it is creating a virtual machine, uh, an EC2 instance in the cloud for us in, uh, in Northern California. So there we go. So I'm going to view instances down here. And now I can see I now have one instance running a T2 micro and it is just no name. So I'm going to click on edit and I'm going to call this my proxy server. Server. Try that. There we go. Okay. So it's already up and running. Um, so if I click on that, I can see the IP address of that server. It is, I've called it proxy server, but right now, remember, it's just Debian 10. There's nothing else installed on it. So I need to copy that IP address. And then I'm going to jump into my command prompt because I downloaded the key to my server, I'm personally going to SSH to my in-house server. All right, so now I'm there. So now the command that I'm going to use is SSH and then dash I for the key that I'm going to be using. So the incoming file that I'm going to be using for the key. And that one is called proxy server.pem is what I downloaded. Then I'm going to go admin because that's the default login for the Debian AMI or Amazon machine image. Admin at and then the IP address that I've already copied to my clipboard. And if I hit enter, it's going to ask me to accept that key. And I say yes. And I am denied permissions on that file ended up being, note that, 766. So everyone has access to those files. So that's interesting. Uh, SSH itself is protecting me from somebody uh, being able to compromise my key. So chmod uh, 700 proxy server dot pem. Let's try that and now try again. So what I've done is, oh, and now I'm connected. It just worked. Uh, 700 means I, the owner of that key, am allowed to um, do anything with it read, write, execute. Um, zero, zero means nobody in the group, nobody um, that is not a part of the group is allowed to access that at all. So it's basically a dumb file that they can't even open. Uh, but I can. All right. So now that I'm connected, I'm going to go sudo su because that's what the command is to become root. So now I am root. So apt update, whoop, apt update. 
is going to grab my repositories. You see, this is a, an actual Debian computer, if you will, in the cloud. It's that easy. I'm already upgrade. I, I'm already running a Debian computer in the cloud. So in that amount of time, and I'm blah blah blahing at the same time, um, we've got a cloud-based Debian server. Did you did you realize it was that easy? And it's free. Okay. So we can do other things with this too. We could set up a LAMP stack. We could use it for MySQL, MariaDB, um, anything you can come up with. It's a Debian server. So we're going to be using this as our proxy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a tool called Tiny Proxy. Nice and simple to install. Uh, apt install Tiny Proxy. Really simple to configure. Say yes. Here we go. And it's done. Now that we've installed Tiny Proxy, we just need to edit the config file. So slash etc slash uh, tiny, tiny Proxy. Changed her into that. And then I'm using nano tinyproxy.conf and edit that. So control W in nano allows me to search. Oh, but before I do search, note that the port by default is using 8888. We're going to need to know that information because that is what we're going to connect to for our proxy. Do a quick search for allow. Alt W allows you to search again. Wow, <laughs> the word allow is probably not the best search query. Maybe search for 127.0.0.1. Um, and just below that one, I'm going to allow, and then I need to add my IP address so that I can connect to this proxy server because right now it's closed down. Only localhost can access it. That's important to note that this is, while this is a public free proxy server, I'm the only one who's going to be allowed to access it, that's going to be allowed to proxy my content my connection through it. So it is private in that regard. I need to know my IP address. So I'm going to jump over to current IP.xyz and copy that IP address to my clipboard and then jump back there and paste it into my config. Control O, enter, Control X. Control O is to write out save the file. Now systemctl restart tiny proxy. Almost done. The final thing that we need to do is we just need to tell AWS, the EC2 security, um, that um, we're going to set up a policy that says, hey, only I am allowed to connect to that server, so nobody else can connect to it whatsoever. So that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to jump back here, and you see this server up on the screen? Well, if I click on security, I can then click on the security group that it has assigned automatically. So just click that. And now it has leapt me over to EC2 security groups and the correct security group. You'll notice that it's already set up one for SSH because it's by default enabled. I can set that to only allow me as well, which is important. So let's do that just to be in good security practices. So SSH, I'm going to change it from custom 0000. I'm going to close uh, X that and then change it to my IP. Then I'm going to add a new rule. You saw how I got here, right? I know I'm moving really, really fast. I've just clicked on edit inbound rules over here. Okay. So add a new rule. Custom TCP is the default. Port number, do you remember? 8888. And only allow my IP. I can call it something if I want. Proxy. And then save my rules. There we go. So now you see SSH and custom TCP, one called proxy on port 8888. So how do we test this? Okay, so our current IP address is 99.233. And so I'm going to connect to the proxy. This is not a tutorial on how to use a proxy. This is not a tutorial on what to use it for necessarily. This is, this. I'm making assumptions here that you can either Google it yourself because it's going to be different based on your use case, whether you want to just proxy your browser or proxy a particular application or your entire network. Um, that's going to be up to your individual use case. This is strictly a tutorial on how to build this EC2 instance really, really quickly for free that has a proxy ready for us to use in California or wherever. And uh, that's, that's it. So in my particular case right now, so this moment is not necessarily what you want to do next. This is just how I am going to test the proxy. I happen to be on Windows 10 here, so I'm going to simply type in proxy and go into proxy settings. Again, this is probably not how you want to do it. 
I just want to test. So I'm going to turn on proxy. I can see that there's an old proxy settings there, so make sure you're mindful of that. Um, if there are old proxy settings, you need to change it. Go to instances on EC2, click on your instance ID and grab that IP address. And then paste that in as the address for your proxy server, port 8888, and save. So now I'm connected to the proxy instantly. Not connected to. Now Windows is saying I'm going to route all your traffic through the proxy. I should correct myself there. So if I go back to current IP.xyz, 99.233 is my current IP. I'm going to hit F5 to refresh. And if all went well, 3.101.108.211. Well, what is that? That's my server. So I am actually now, where am I? Let's find out. Maxmind.com. Let's do a search for the IP address that I'm currently on. Where am I? San Jose, California. That's where Maxmind determines me to be. So that's all there is to it, folks. We have created, configured, deployed a free proxy service that we own and operate. We're the only ones who has that, who have that uh, SSH key. So if you want to connect in, make changes, use it as a multi-purpose server, you can do that. Um, but just keep an eye on your, your billing stuff. Just make sure that you haven't exceeded thresholds and things like that. If you're just using it as a proxy, it's very unlikely you're going to do that. It's just something that you're piping data through. So check that out. It's aws.amazon.com to get yourself started. If you have questions, post them to our community. Head on over to uh, our Discord. You'll find the link at category5.tv on the Interact menu. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this, if you've used it or found it useful, give me a big thumbs up. Please subscribe. 